Good evening and welcome. It's 8pm on Halloween or All Hallows Eve. A day and a night that so many ignorantly and unwisely use and choose to celebrate darkness and play with fear as if we didn't have enough of either of those things in our daily lives at the moment. Eight months of pandemic that's brought restriction, isolation and sorrow. Riots on the streets of many nations, financial markets in free fall, almost 1.2 million people dead worldwide with winter on its way. Churches closed to public worship for the first time in 2000 years. As Pete Gregg, founder of 24 seven prayer said this afternoon on his Instagram feed, if 2020 still hasn't brought us to our knees, if it hasn't yet become a klaxon call to urgent prayer, if it isn't making me kinder, if I am still expecting politicians to solve it, or economists to fix it, or doctors to cure it, or Bible verses to keep my problems at bay, maybe I need to ask the Holy Spirit for a little urgent CPR to awake my zombie soul to seek the Lord while he may be found, to call on him while he is near. So for just a few minutes tonight, I want to invite you to join me in taking a moment to think about the light of Christ. And then for all of us together, wherever we're seated in our homes, to light a candle uh, at the same time and say and mean the words of a simple prayer that I'm going to lead us in. So let's begin by listening to some words of life and light from Scripture from the Apostle Paul and his letter to the Colossians. For this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you and asking God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all spiritual wisdom and understanding. And we pray this in order that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and may please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience and joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the kingdom of light. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. First thing I want to say is number one, let's thank God for a kingdom that is not dark and that Satan is defeated. Satan is real. He's not a six year old wearing a red hairband with horns and carrying a pointy fork. He's the opposite, although absolutely in no way the equal of God. He's dark and there is no light, no good, no joy, no kindness in him. And it's his power from which God has liberated us. As Paul writes, he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the son he loves. So thank God, if you know Jesus, that you have a king who loves you and you've been rescued from one who hates you. You've been rescued through the cross. The only weapon the devil has is to point at your breaking of God's law and demand God's just punishment. But as Paul says in chapter two of Colossians, when Christ died, he took it, that's the punishment for law breaking, away, nailing it to the cross. And so he disarmed the powers and authorities of evil. So tonight, let's praise God that in Christ's death, the devil has lost his claim on us and has nothing to accuse us of. Praise God that we belong to the kingdom of light and that as convincing a liar as the devil is, he is a disarmed loser. 
Secondly, as his church, let's pray for ourselves to represent Jesus well. Now we might disagree over some things as Christians of different human traditions, but let's always remember that what unites us as the body of Christ is infinitely greater than what divides us. Jesus said, the thief, meaning the devil, comes to steal, kill and destroy, but I have come to give life in all its fullness. So let's not do the devil's work for him in sowing destruction through our words and actions. Instead, let's stand together and speak and give life. Paul prays that we may live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work. So let's be those who choose to be kind and look out for one another, the least, the last and the lost. Sean Connery, who sadly passed away today, said once, love may not make the world go round, but I must admit that it makes the ride worthwhile. So let's represent Jesus well by choosing to love. Now that's all I have to say. So before we light our candles to represent the kingdom of light that Jesus gives us, together let's come into God's presence in prayer. Let's pray. As I enter prayer now, I pause to be still, to breathe slowly, to recenter my scattered senses upon the presence of God. Lord, on this dark October night, in these dark and difficult times, give us the grace to seek your face with love. Come Holy Spirit and fill our hearts, for we are empty and we need you to show us, Jesus, the light of the world, to give us light to walk by and light to guide the path of others. Amen. Now I'm going to turn my light out here and then in a moment together we'll light our candles and we'll pray the words of this prayer on the screen. Let's pray together. Jesus, you are the light of the world. On this night, I ask you to shine your light on me and everyone around me. Shine your light in the darkness of this world and cast out the evil one. May the light of your word enter and fill the hearts of all who read and hear it. And may your will be done and your kingdom come in our town, our nation and our world. Amen. Apologies if you heard my dog during that prayer. Um, he was a little bit unsettled by some fireworks outside. Thank you for joining me tonight. Now, only if it's safe to do so, maybe you'd like to leave your candle burning in a window facing your street outside as a sign of hope to those who pass by. But for now, may God the Father draw you to himself. May God the Son be your constant companion and may God the Holy Spirit fill your hearts with his light and love. Amen. Amen.